Hello guys, welcome back to TechDoz and in this video we will be looking at the shifting letters 2 problem which is from lead code number 2381. Before looking at the solution, uh, I will expect that you will watch my video on how to do range update in order of one time and I have already explained this using the difference array. So the link for this video will be in the i button and also in the description below. So please look at this, learn the difference array and then again come back to do the shifting letters 2 problem. Now I will expect that you have seen this video. So let's now uh, read the problem statement. In this problem you are given a string s of lowercase english letters and a 2d integer array shifts where shifts at i equals start i and i comma direction i. For every i shift the characters in the string s from the index start i to the index end i inclusive forward if the direction i value is 1 or shift the characters backward if the uh, direction i value is 0. Shifting a character forward means replacing it with the next letter in the alphabet wrapping around so that Z becomes A. So after Z you will be reaching to A by doing plus 1. Similarly, shifting a character backward means the replacing it with the previous letter in the alphabet and wrapping around uh, so that A becomes Z if you do minus 1. Return the final string after all such shifts to S are applied. Now in this example, if you look, uh, we are given ABC. So if the initial state of the string is ABC, this is having index 0, 1, 2. Now if I apply the uh, first shift query, so the first uh, shift is saying that from index 0 to 1, we have to add minus 1 value to each of these characters. So if you add minus 1 to A, then A has to be shifted backward. And since you know that it is already in the form of a cycle, where uh, you will get y, z and after z you will be reverting back to a. This is when you do plus 1 and the reverse is true when you do minus 1. So from b if you do minus 1 you will reach to a. From a if you do plus 1 you will reach to b. So this 0 that is the query type 0 means that we have to do minus 1. So if you do minus 1 here uh, then fr uh, from 0 to 1 then this a will become z and this b uh, will be converted to a. And the C will remain as it is because this is outside of the range of 0, 1. The second query is from 1 to 2. So this is for A, C. And it is saying a uh, query type 1. That means we have to add a value 1. So this will become Z, B, D. And then the third query is from 0 to 2. And this is uh, saying query type 1. So 0 to 2 means including everything. And if you add 1 to it, then Z will become A. Because it will uh, wrap around and will be uh, reaching to A. Right, so Z will become A, B will become C and D will become E. So the string will be A's and you will look at it, it is A's, right? So this is the entire simulation of the given problem. And if you try to solve it by the simulation approach, then if the shifts operations are, let's say Q, where Q number of uh, shifts operation are present and if the string length is N, then each of the query can start from zero and go till N minus one and cover the entire string for the update. So the time complexity for such simulation type approach will be order of Q times of N, right? So let's now look at the uh, constraint and see if it supports our idea. Now in this case, the S dot length and the shifts dot length, that means N and Q are both 5 times of 10 to the power 4 in the worst case. So you can imagine that if you multiply these two times, it will be 2.5 times of 10 to the power of 9, which is greater than 10 to the power of 8. Therefore, it is going to give you time limit exceeded for one second. So you should always solve with the total computations to be less than 10 to the power of 8. Now, all the other constraints are given. You can just read about it. That the start will be less than equals to end, which will be always within the valid range. And S consists of lowercase English letters. So once you have understood this problem, let's now understand the idea of cycle using remainder. Now, if you consider this B, then if the character B has to be incremented, let's say 52 times, then what will be the resultant character? It will still be B. Because as you know that A, B, C and so on, everybody till Z will be all in a cyclic chain, right? So if you start with A and do plus 1, you will reach to B. And if you do plus 2, you will reach to C. So if you do plus 25, you will reach to Z. But if you had done plus 26, then you will again reach back to A and... and adding plus 27 to a or adding plus 1 to a has the exact same meaning right and also uh, you can see that in the jump size of plus 26 you will always 
find that the same thing is true so adding plus 53 to a has the same effect as 27 ad addition or plus 1 addition and why this is happening because this is a cycle of size 26 okay so since there are 26 lowercase letters therefore it will form a cycle size of 26 if you consider it in a circular approach and therefore uh, if even if it is doing any number of time let's say x times increment we have to just take a mod of 26 and then we will find out what will be the actual increment so if the increment is k times then the actual increment will be k mod of 26 times i hope you have understood this similarly for this b if you want to increment it by 53 times then you take 53 mod of uh, 26 it will be 1 so the remainder 1 means that b needs to be incremented only one time and you will be reaching to c right now this is all about the positive addition that means shifting to the right hand side now if you if you were shifting to the left hand side that means if you are subtracting then what happens now if b has to be subtracted 52 times again it will reach to b right and if b has to be subtracted 53 times it will be equivalent to if you just take 53 mod of 26 then the remainder will be 1 and so 1 times it has to be shifted on the left hand side okay so the if you shift b one times to the left hand side it will be a now what we will be doing in this problem is we will be converting this uh, right and left shift to be equivalent to only right shift right so we will just simplify this problem by saying that can we convert this left shift to the right shift operations so that i can solve it pretty easily if you think about it then if you add let's say plus 25 to this a then you will be reaching to z and if you subtract minus 1 from a then again you will be reaching to z right now if you add plus 2 to a you will be reaching to c and if you subtract minus 24 from a then again you will be reaching to c so you can you can note that the negative number can actually be converted to the positive number and that we can do with the remainder theorem now let's understand a little bit about the basics of remainder so if you take 7 mod of 5 then it will be 2 but if you take minus 7 mod of 5 then it will be 3 okay this is how the negative remainder will work the negative remainder is something like uh, i mean you can just consider it to be positive and uh, it will not give you the actual remainder it will give you whatever is the value here 5 minus whatever would have been the remainder if this value was positive so the remainder would have been 2 so this will give me 3 right so that will be the actual positive remainder so in this case what it means that if the alphabet size was 5 then minus 7 is saying that it is equals to either you do uh, I mean minus 2 times left shift that means 2 times left shift is equivalent to 3 times right shift okay this is always true so let's say you have item a b c d e which is forming a cycle of size 5 so in this particular case if you start at this a and you say that I will be doing 2 times left shift so you will reach to d otherwise you can say that i will be doing three times right shift and again you will be reaching to the so this is the meaning by taking a negative and a positive remainder right so we are converting the left shift operation to the right shift equivalent operation so i hope you have understood how it is done therefore if you see a, a decrement operation then the actual decrement will be k mod of 26 and if you uh, get a negative number then the offset can be done by adding 26 so you will look at all these concepts in the code so I hope you have understood uh, how we are using the remainder here. Now let's uh, do a dry run using the difference array in order to do all the range update in order of one time. Okay, so let's say our given string is D, Z, T, X and the queries are 0 to 2 of type 0. So type 0 will always decrement the value by 1 and type 1 will always increment the value by 1. This will decrement and this will increment, right? So let's process the query one by one using the difference array. Now, in my video of difference array, I had explained that uh, if you want to do range update, I will be taking one extra size so that you don't get a segmentation fault. So if you want to increase the value in the range of L to R, increase or decrease, whatever, if I consider increment, then if I want to increase by a value U, then I will be doing difference array at L plus equals U and difference array at R plus one minus equals U. And since this R plus one can go out of bound, if the range, I mean, the end range is three, therefore i will be adding a dummy so this index 4 is actually a dummy entry now the difference array will be initially 0 
and we will uh, try to do the range updates now now let's process the query one by one the first query is saying that in the range of 0 to 2 decrement the value by 1 so at 0 i will decrement by 1 and at 2 plus 1 that means 3 i will be incrementing the value by 1 okay this is done for this query second query 1 2 3 increment the value by 1 so at 1 i will increment by 1 and at 3 plus 1 i will be decrementing by 1 you will understand why we are doing that now 0 to 1 uh, we have to decrease the value by 1 so 0 to 1 decrease by 1 so at 0 i will be uh, making this minus 2 and at 1 plus 1 i will be making it at 1 that means incrementing the value now in the next query we will increase 2 to 2 by 1 so at 2 i will be increasing it by 1 so i'll make it 2 and uh, at this 2 plus 1 that means 3 i will be decrementing the value by 1 so i'll be making it 0 so the final difference array is minus 2 1 2 0 minus 1 this is the difference array okay now from this particular difference array i have to get the actual effective increment now for this one the increment may not be one time exactly okay it may be something else so how do we get it from this difference array i will just move from left to right and calculate the actual value if you do that then uh, uh, find the cumulative value it will be minus 2 plus 1 which is minus 1 plus 2 which will be 1 1 plus 0 will be 1 1 plus minus 1 will be 0 now this last value is a dummy value i don't need to see that okay now what are all these values in the difference array minus 2 minus 1 1 1 this means that d has to be left shifted by two times this is the meaning for this minus 2 and similarly z has to be left shifted by my uh, by one time t has to be right shifted by one time and x has to be right shifted by one time now how will this shifting be done as we have known that minus two time I, I will be all converting it into the right shift operation so two times left shift if you take mod of 26 it will be equals to 24 okay so two times left shift is equals to 24 times right shift so if you do 24 times right shift you will be making this b similarly for this z one time uh, left shift is equals to 25 times right shift so you will be making this y and this t one times right shift so simply you will make it u and for this last one for this one uh, you will be making it as y so the final string will be b y u y okay so this is how we can get it you can use the ascii additions and you will get the final answer so this will be shown in the code as well so we need to return the final string as we have formed and the string is cyclic as as it was mentioned in the problem statement now if you consider the time complexity then first we are uh, taking the difference array initializing it with all zeros and after doing this uh, we are performing each of the query and we are doing range update using the difference array each of the range update using difference array is o one time so if you have q queries it will take order of q time okay and finally uh, in the in the next step i am also passing through the entire difference array in o n time because it has n entries for n is the size of the string and I am finding the final set of operations that have to be performed on each of the character on S. And then an extra step is required order of N, which is parsing through this entire string and building the final string. So this is the entire process. And so the time complexity will be order of Q for the range update in O1 per query, N for getting the update uh, of the difference array, and then another N for building the shifted string of size N. And you can say that it is order of q plus n and the space complexity is order of n due to the difference array let's now look at the code if you are someone who is looking to prepare for top product based company within a limited time of just three months then we have brought for you both the dsa and the system design live interview training program the most important feature of this program is you get a filtered and condensed structured curriculum in-depth discussion of all the topics and my guarantee of your understanding one-on-one -on -one guidance with me and live weekend classes to know more about the training you can whatsapp us on this given number in this problem we are given the string and the uh, queries of shifts and i will be finding the size of string taking the difference array of size n plus one initialized with value zero then i will be doing the range update in the difference array using all the queries of the shifts so if the shift query is type 1 then i will be doing the plus 1 increment otherwise i will be doing minus 1 increment and then after doing this after updating the difference array i will be getting the actual 
uh, right or left shift that I have to do in the difference array by finding the cumulative sum for all the indices right from the beginning. So you can say it is similar to the prefix sum technique. And then uh, we have to build the final string. While for building the final string, we will go to each of the character and then find how many shift operations are required. Now, if the count value is less than zero, then you know that I have to uh, do an extra addition. Like if I have to do two times left shift, then I will be adding 26 to it. And I will say that I have to effectively do 24 times right shift. Two times left shift is equal to 24 times right shift. By just adding the value 26, we can make it happen. Okay. Now, once you know the equivalent right shift after this, at this line number 28, the left shift will also be equivalent uh, to a right shift because the value has been changed. Okay. Now, for this uh, current character, it will try to calculate that if SI is the current character, then I want to do count number of right shifts. And if I do that, I will be taking mod of 26 so that it will wrap around. And then I will be adding the ASCII of the start of the uh, I mean al alphabet which is 97 for this small a and I will be converting this entire ASCII value to character and once I have got the current character I will be appending it to the result and finally after storing all the characters we will be returning the result and this is our final solution I hope you have understood the difference array optimal solution if you still have any doubt then feel free to comment below and I'll try to help you as soon as possible like and share our video and subscribe to our channel in order to watch more of these programming videos. See you guys in the next video. Thank you.